Hi everyone, my name is Mayesha and I'm a beauty director here at Sephora and I'm joined by Ashna. Hi. <laughs> and Ashna's actually a Sephora team member. Uh, you requested in the comment section you wanted to see uh, some Indian wedding makeup and we just happened to find a bride to be at Sephora headquarters, so it's perfect timing. So we were kind of like chilling over lunch, talking uh, and you know, getting a vibe for Ashna's personal style. So. And you know, for people that aren't familiar with Indian culture, what would you say are sort of like trademarks of an Indian wedding makeup? Yeah, eyes. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they have to pop. Mm -hmm. So, um, lots of dark liner mm -hmm. on top, on bottom, mm -hmm. very dramatic look. Um, lashes, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oftentimes we see a lot of like red lipstick and we're gonna talk about that towards the end of the tutorial. We really wanted to personalize it. Um, Ashna seems just like very free flowing, laid back, but we still want it to be glam, we want it to be glam the day of. Yeah, we want like uh, a soft yeah, glam. Yeah, you know, you know, soft glam. Uh, so I think we came up with something really great. Uh, when I got this assignment, I was so excited because uh, for those of you that don't know, I used to work in store for many years and my home store is actually in Little India in Cerritos, California. So I have done so many weddings. I used to do cultural dance in high school, so I've done Indian dancing. Oh, wow. Like, I, like, I've been there. So this is like <laughs> the perfect assignment. This was like meant to be. Uh, so we're gonna have some fun and we are gonna do some really beautiful makeup. So stay tuned. Okay, so so we are going to talk about eyeliner. Eyeliner is so important, I think, for any bridal look, but especially for an Indian wedding, eyeliner is such a look and it's so traditional. Um, and that's why I have four different types of eyeliner. Uh, you don't need to use every single one that I do, but I find that I really love the flexibility of the different kinds. So I'll just go over like which ones uh, we're going to be using today. So I feel like Kajal is definitely the most traditional. Yeah. Um, if you're not used to um, having all these different kinds of liner. Casual is kind of like an oilier type of liner, like it moves a lot. So we're not gonna use casual just because it, it tends to travel and move a lot. You don't really wanna have to worry about touching up. There's so many things, you know, that you have to hit, touch on during the day of the wedding. So we're gonna use cold pencil. These are non-waterproof, so they'll smudge really easily. If you do have maybe like oily eyelids or maybe uh, you are just used to a waterproof, uh, the Sephora Collection 12 hour contour pencils are amazing. Finally, I'll be using liquid liner, of course. Any wedding, I just love a liquid liner. And for an Indian wedding, going for that almond shaped eye is just kind of key to nailing the look. Um, so this is from Clinique. This is the Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen. And this is a really great sort of brush tip. So we're just gonna go jump right into applying makeup now. That's the fun part. So I'll be starting with the Sephora Collection Long Lasting Cold Pencil. And this is the brown one, the deep brown. So we're just gonna go in right now with this. All right, so I will be using two different shades of the cold pencil. I'll be using the brown first and then the black. The reason why I like to use brown first is because you'll get your smokiness, you'll get most of your definition, and then you can just use a little bit of black where you need a little bit of extra emphasis versus overusing black, which can get really harsh really easily. Um, so I will be going ahead, going close, and I'm basically just going to sort of softly smudge this into the eye. And also since we're doing a wing liner later, because that's very um, reminiscent of an Indian wedding, that winged almond eye, um, this is going to help set up the wing liner for later. I like to do liner before and after eyeshadow because I feel like sort of like book ending it makes it really deep and it lasts a lot longer. Sometimes when you use shimmery shadow, which we'll be using gold later, and you put liner over it, the gold or the shimmers kind of eat up the eyeliner and then it kind of disappears. But having it underneath as well as on top just kind of helps. And this is the Makeup Match Precision Concealer Brush. I just love a little tiny smudge brush. So we're just getting in there and smoking that brown and it's already looking really pretty. I'm gonna have you look up basically we're laying it down but you can see with that brown it's already giving this beautiful sort of like almond shaped uh, look to the eye if we want to go in with the black now we're just adding a little bit and we can go back later and add a bit more but this gives us like really sooty sort of smoky really beautiful base to our eye look and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side Okay, so my first layer of liner is on. Um, I'm sandwiching the liner, so liner goes on first, 
I do all my shadow and then I touch up the liner. Um, this makes it so that, you know, throughout the day your eyeliner fades and you're like, where did it go? And it's like very disappointing when you figure that out. But this way, if the eyeliner does fade a little bit, it's still gonna have something underneath. Uh, so it's, it's gonna be great. Great for every day, but also really great for a special occasion. So we're gonna go into eyeshadow. So this is a favorite of mine, a favorite of many people. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Soft Glam Eyeshadow Palette. I actually, I think this is great for anybody, um, but I find that just the depth of the shadow, it's pretty medium to deep, so I feel like it's very brown girl friendly. Has the gold, we were like playing with it, and it has that red mulberry. I feel like it's like made for an Indian wedding. And also you can use it after the wedding and it's gonna get a lot of use. It's not something that's so over the top and so glamorous that you'll never use it again. So this is what we're gonna go with. Like I wanna see you in those pinks, but we're gonna stick with the golds and reds today. Um, and then uh, to make sure everything stays put and to make sure I can kind of sort of pop the uh, crease a little bit in a second, I'm gonna be using an eyeshadow primer. This is from Benefit Cosmetics. This is the Stay Don't Stray 360 Degree Stay Put Eyeshadow Primer. It comes in a few shades. This is just a light to medium. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that. I don't need a ton. All right, so I have a little bit of the primer on my hand. I just wanna make sure that what I put on stays put. So I'm using the Pro Crease 27. And the reason I'm using the crease one is because I don't wanna put too much. And this is nice and fluffy and kind of like little wispy hairs. So this I'll just put just enough eyeshadow and putting very little in the crease so I don't sort of ruin the dimension that's going on with her eyes naturally. So eyeshadow primer's on. I put more of it on the lid uh, than anywhere else. A little bit in the crease here. I mean, you don't have to be that precise with it, but I find um, as long as you have a continuous sort of layer of eyeshadow primer, works well because when people sort of stop right here, then anything you blend above that is gonna have this weird disconnect. One's gonna look fully pigmented, the other above that is gonna look a little weird and fade away. So make sure it goes from the lash line all the way up to the brow bone. Okay, so we're gonna move on to eyeshadow. This is like the fun Whoa. part. Yeah, like we were gagging over this eyeshadow palette. I think this is a perfect choice for her. Uh, so we are using the Makeup Match Crease Brush and I'll be dipping into Burnt Orange. So we are uh, adding in this transition color and this is Burnt Orange with the eye open. Your eye always kind of changes shape and things look different when it's closed versus open. And, and unless you walk around with your eyes closed, do it with your eyes open as much as you can. It definitely helps for those sort of sculpting shades. So I like to start with something very soft. I don't think I'm gonna go very dark in the crease. I want it to be really pretty and polished and have some emphasis on the, the sort of like almond shape that's very um, prevalent in Indian wedding makeup, but I want it to still be soft. So I'm just taking this shade and kind of doing windshield wiper motions. You kind of want a shade for your transition that I call it a nothing color. I love those shades that kind of just blend right into my skin. That's gonna make anything else you put on the top just blend so much easier. And you'll know exactly where to place your brush because that little sort of point in your crease brush will just go right into the orbital bone. If you were looking at someone's you know, skull, it's like right at the top. That's the orbital bone right in there. It'll just hug it. You want most of the eyeshadow to be on the outer half or two thirds, and then sort of the leftover on the brush to kind of come inward. Okay, so that is our first color. It should be soft. It should be like almost undetectable because it's gonna allow the other colors to sort of melt into the eye. So now we're gonna go into Rustic. Really, whichever shade you choose that's darker than the last one is fine. I'll be using that brush that I use for the smudging of the eyeliner, the Precision Concealer Brush. And I'm just tapping right there in the outer corner. Um, she has very large eyes, so it's kind of like the outer 25%, and most people it's kind of like the outer third. Um, and I just wanna make sure, it's almost like a little triangle. I'm just putting that right in there. Okay, so we have laid down that darker color that is rustic. Now we're gonna dip into the exact same color we just used and we are going to just really gently, very short motions, because if you do very long strokes this way, it'll drag the shadow out to places we don't want it to go. So we're just placing it there and just wiggling back and forth. Now if you try to do this without placing down that transition color first, you're gonna have a tough time blending it. It's possible, but harder than you need to work. So that's blending. If you want to, you can very softly, just like tiny, tiny bit of the rustic. Just add a little bit more. I like to sort of lay it down with a denser brush because I can get a lot of pigment. Anything fluffy like this 
is very soft and it blends pigment. It doesn't really lay down a lot of pigment. I would say don't let a lot of shadow fall below this angle of the lower lash line. Because again, um, we're going for an almond shaped eye. We don't want it to be like too round because uh, we want it to kind of be lifted. Okay, so depending on the level of makeup you plan on doing, um, you can stop here, maybe pop on a little shimmer on the lid. I like to build my colors. I'm not gonna use a ton of black, but even if I was gonna do like a black crease or something, I would start with a light brown, then a medium brown, then a dark brown, and then a black. I feel like it just is easier to blend and it gives a more like sophisticated look as opposed to just as teenagers would probably threw black on our eyes and called it a day. Uh, so I've gone into burnt orange, I've gone into rustic, now I'm going into cypress umber. So exact same thing I did with the previous color. We are just going deeper. Go ahead and close. I feel like once you do a lot of your sculpting and shaping, you can kind of like move your face around a lot, but the first sort of establishing colors, you really wanna look straight ahead. And then when you do your liquid liner or any kind of um, wing liner, you definitely want to relax your face. Same thing, um, kind of creating, some people call it a triangle, it's like a C on some people, just depending on the shape of the eye. And then we're blending, and remember like very controlled strokes. Um, you wanna be very intentional with what you do, I don't wanna scare you, but everything you do kind of serves a purpose with makeup. So, you know, kind of doing like this in really frantic motions, you're gonna get, get frantic eyeshadow. So just use really short, strokes just to blend. We always say the goal of a makeup artist is for every step of the makeup to be really pretty. We're not done with the Soft Glam Eyeshadow Palette, um, but I wanna lay down a little bit of a shimmery, champagne -y cream shadow before I lay down our like ultimate accessory, our gold shadow. So this is from Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, this is the Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Shadow in Jean, and it's this beautiful sort of like champagne -y gold color. It's really, really nice. So pretty. Yeah, this will be really nice because putting the uh, creamy gold underneath the powder shadow is gonna make it last longer. It's a wedding, remember? I think we're just, we're getting, I'm getting involved in the shenanigans. So I'm like, your makeup has to last. So let's think about that too. So this will be really pretty before we put on our gold and we've already like on the side discussed which gold we're gonna use. So you are really gonna enjoy it. So I'll be using the small shadow brush, number 15 from Sephora collection. The whole point of the shimmer on the lid is so that when you look down, you have those candid photos. Your eyelids look so beautiful and shiny. So I'm laying it down with that Pro 15 brush and now I'm taking the Pro Crease brush that I applied the eyeshadow primer with and just kind of blending the edges. This is also a really nice formula to wear um, just as every day because it just has this really beautiful texture to it. I've gotten so many brides ready and I always try to make sure what I pick for them for the wedding, they can actually use after the wedding. Your brow bone's so pretty, I just put a teeny bit right there. So we're going to go back into the eyeshadow palette now to finish this off, and I'm gonna go into glistening. I like glistening because it is gold, but it's kind of champagne-y gold, has a little bit of pink to it, uh, and we're, we're, you know, you're trying to stay traditional, but give them a little, you know, something un unexpected, so I think this would be really pretty. So I'm gonna close for me. So I'm just tapping that on there. Because the cream shadow is down, I don't really have to try very hard to get it to adhere to the lid. The higher you go with the shimmery color, the bigger the lids will sort of look. So if you have smaller lids or you're a little bit hooded, you can go a little higher. Okay, so we've laid that down. Crease brush again, taking that original transition crease color, burnt orange, and just making sure everything blends really nicely. I think when people are doing their eyeshadow, they sort of feel like, oh, if I already put down one color, I can't go back and do it, I failed. And like, just keep repeating things until you know, you know, you, you get it going. Like, you can go back into the original colors for sure, because as you add things, it's gonna fade, so mm -hmm. totally fine. We love this bronze shade. So we're gonna add a little bit of that bronze shade, because that's like a true deep gold. So we're gonna add that kind of on the sort of outer half of the lid, and it's super metallic. So this is gonna pick up the gold jewelry so nicely. All right, so I think the eyeshadow is at a pretty good point. You can always add more once you're done with the entire face. I'm gonna go into the eyeliner I talked about earlier. I used some cold pencils, but this is the waterproof 12 hour uh, colorful contour eyeliner from Sephora Collection. And I like using this underneath a wing liner. It just provides a really nice black base. It doesn't move. And this is gonna be very easy because I already had a liner down grab my favorite little precision concealer brush and just smudge that in there. 
put an open for me. So I'm having you look up. I'm also going to add a little bit to this outer corner. So I'm sort of rimming that outer corner like that and look straight ahead and ever so slightly pulling it out. So this is waterproof. This is the 12 hour colorful contour eyeliner. Um, I always ask brides if they're criers. I feel like Ashna and I got to know each other pretty well over lunch. So who's a crier in the family, you think? I'm a crier, <laughs> my mom's a crier, and if I see my dad tear up at the end of the wedding, I will definitely lose it. Yeah, yeah, so, so. advice, if you're a bride and you're like, oh, I don't really cry that often, someone that you care about is gonna cry, and yep. that's gonna make you cry, so opt for waterproofing yep. things when in doubt. So we're gonna go in a little bit of this I think it looks pretty good. We're gonna go on with some liquid liner in a second, but if you want to really go for that almond, go ahead and open that inner corner, just add a little extra black eyeliner to that inner corner. That's what your eyes kind of do naturally, so you don't really need much help emphasizing that, but you can add a little extra there and it'll give you this really beautiful sort of feline shaped eye. Okay, so we're gonna finish off our liners with some winged liner. I can never get my <laughs> winged liner right. It, it's fine. Like, it, I mean, I've been doing a winged liner. I, I saw a picture of myself in high school and I've been doing it since I was 15. Oh I'm gosh. 33 now. That's a lot. That's more than half my life. So I've been doing it for a long time and even I mess up from time to time. So um, what's the secret? So for me, I like a sort of brush tip liner. So this is something one of my friends at Clinique gifted me a few years back and I just thank her because this works so well and so easy to do. So this is the Clinique Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen. It has those little like I think nylon fibers on it. It gives you more of that like wisp. It kind of yeah. the end flies away. So I set myself up pretty well for this liquid liner because I've kind of dragged out that pencil liner. So I really just have to go in and tighten it up. This liner, the pencil I have on, is pretty black already. So I'm really just kind of touching it up right above the lashes, getting it started. I'm kind of letting it rest on top of the lashes and dragging it across. Um, Ashna has a little bit of mascara on. I like to put a little mascara on before I do wing liner because it helps me see the shape of the eye. Go ahead and look straight ahead for me. I'm letting the lower lash line of the eye be my guide to my wing liner. So it shouldn't really fall below that. Um, sometimes people do a very vertical liquid liner and I think that looks really cool, very modern. I do that a lot of times, but for an Indian wedding or something where you want that really almond shaped eye, you wanna go slightly upward. So what can help too, kind of like this, the concept of the clean eyeshadow brush with the one that's applying, you can use an eyeliner brush if you want just to get that nice little wisp right before it dries. I think that's kind of easier than doing the concealer method where you clean it up, because then you just mix the concealer with the black, it turns gray. and that's never really worked for me. So just look straight ahead. This gives us a really pretty shape. So we're gonna add some lashes. I chose the Lily Lashes, the 3D Mink Miamis. Miamis, these are very popular because they kind of have that like winged out shape. And you know, we did all this work to have this like beautiful wing and have these like very angular eyes. And then if we put a really round lash on it, we're just kind of like fighting against it. So we wanna keep with the same shape. We're gonna pop these on off camera, we'll be right back. All right, so we popped on the lashes. They look incredible. Uh, and I just find that these are so popular because they just add so much lift and flair to the eye. And if we want to add a little bit more below, we can, but I always like to put the lashes on first because you never know how much you need on the bottom until you have the lashes on the top. So now that we have the lashes on, I'm gonna quickly go ahead and look up, really get in there and add that black liner. This is sort of a staple for this type of look, but it's really up to your preference. I think we did a pretty good job of kind of like balancing things that are traditional and expected um, also with Ashna's preferences too. So that, I think that that versus that, that just really ties it together. That looks really beautiful. Okay, so we are almost done. We've done the eyes. I think they look beautiful, um, but we're gonna talk about lip colors. So traditionally, you see a lot of red lipstick yep. uh, for Indian weddings. Red is a very significant color, but when we were talking, I was like, mm, I don't know if you're a red kind of gal. So what do you think your mom would want you to wear? My mom is very glamorous, mm -hmm. so she would love a bright red. Okay. 
My mom probably would too. Yeah, for yeah. sure. She. I feel like it's it's traditional. It's like classic. Yeah. But you know, it's all about taking you know the tradition, but still making it your own. So we're actually gonna go with something more neutral. Um, we have the gold. We have the liner. You know, you don't have to exactly replicate a look in order to sort of draw inspiration from it. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go with you know maybe some like Fenty yeah. something. We're gonna come up with something that's more neutral. Uh, that's really beautiful. That's gonna be very easy for you to touch up. Feels like me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll be lining the lips with this Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. So these are ones you can use on eyes, lips, or brows, which is really great. And this is Anywhere Caffeine. So we're lining the lips. I'm from LA, so I overline everyone just a little bit. And kind of like putting on that liner and then touching it up. I'm sort of filling in most of the lip. When and if the lipstick fades away, you still have this liner kind of as your lipstick. So I filled in with the lip liner. I almost used it as a lipstick. I filled in most of the lip. I wanna go in with something from Fenty Beauty. Uh, and this is the Senna Lip Paint in Unbutton. I love this color. I think the secret with this color is to apply the teeniest little amount. Okay, so I have a little bit on the back of my hand. And when I apply this to myself, this particular color, I just use my fingertip and kind of blot it on. So to sort of mimic that, I'm just taking an eyeshadow brush. Uh, and this is just the Makeup Matte Shadow Brush. Taking a little bit and tapping it on. Yeah, once I started putting just the teeniest amount of this color, it really became one of my favorites. It's kind of a peachy nude, depending on like the color of your lips, how light or dark it can read is kind of light or it can be kind of like melony colored. So we're gonna top it off with gloss. I always like to layer lips, lip liner, lipstick, gloss. Um, I'm gonna be using something from Pat McGrath Labs. This is the Lust Lip Gloss in Flesh Astral. It's this beautiful sort of peachy shimmery color. So I wanna put the majority of it in the center of the lips and then just a teeny bit outward. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done. Uh, I think it's gorgeous. I think your personality still shines through. So what are you gonna wear accessory-wise the day of? Yeah, so I'm thinking of wearing um, lighter earrings, but still a still mm -hmm. statement piece yeah. with um, a pretty heavy necklace. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of Indian brides will wear um, a head piece. So looking to wear that um, as well. Okay. And you were, we were talking about hair. Like, I feel like I'm like involved in this wedding now. Like, I'm invested. <laughs> we are talking about hair. So for the ceremony, your hair is traditionally up because you have things going on yep. on your head. And then for the like reception part, you take that down. Yeah, uh -huh. so the traditionally for the wedding ceremony, you'll have a veil on. Mm -hmm. um, and so majority of your head will be covered. Mm -hmm. And then for the reception, you can kind of let loose. Yeah. Um, and so I'm hoping to take my hair down for that. Yeah, because there's no reason that, you know, just make sure the front looks nice and free. Yeah. No reason to have these like beautiful curls and the veil is probably kind of heavy, kind of dragging yep. them down. So, okay, so we're going to show you the final look in a second. Uh, this is going to be really exciting for everyone in the studio. We've been waiting for this. So we'll be right back. We are all set. Earrings are on, hair's down, she's killing it. I'm gonna show her final looks. I showed her a little bit in progress. I think it's gorgeous. I think the the really black dramatic wing with how dark your hair is, like putting the hair down just kind of brought it all together. So it's almost like she has a different look on with the hair down. So I think it's really beautiful. So go ahead and subscribe. This was one of your ideas. Uh, you left in the comment section that you wanted to see an Indian wedding makeup tutorial. We sourced our own bride-to-be uh, from Sephora. So this is incredible, it all came together. Uh, and we'll see you next time, bye.